Yes, there we go. Cool. We're on. We're live. Here we go. So, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to put together the... There we go. We're coming through nice and loud and clear. So, one of the reasons why I wanted to put together the uh, Mistakes Manifesto, basically, is this is going to be the first of five videos which I'm putting together, uh, running through, um, basically, five different core areas of business. So, business in general, finances, marketing, sales, and those sorts of things, and listing out the common mistakes which I see businesses making. And effectively, if you're making any of these mistakes, then you should really be going and getting some help. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, this is my new brand. Obviously, I was busy speaking to myself for the first four minutes of this video, but um, now we're on live. Um, like, by the way, guys, if you wouldn't mind like sharing this, making sure you hit the like key and things like that, just bring it to other people's attention. Um, if you've got any feedback on the new branding, um, I would love to hear from you. Uh, we're sticking with the red. We love the blue, um, and I wanted it to be a bit washed out, surfy, that sort of thing. Anyway, so that's what not not what this is about. Basically, this is about um, today. This is going to be the business mistakes manifesto. So the top 10 business mistakes which I see um, business owners making pretty much every day of the week and then wondering why their business isn't necessarily um, sort of firing and working the way that they want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to list these out and then I'm going to talk through each one. Uh, this video is probably only going to be about sort of 10 or 15 minutes, um, but um, so bear with me. Um, I've got a cool little offer at the end, um, which I want to share with you. Basically, um, it's about my members program. So uh, if you hang on to the end of this, then um, it would be great just to um, for, for me to tell you a little bit more about um, the Fearless Crew and what it's all about. So here we go. Um, basically, uh, the first mistake is that your um, your mum, your friend, your brother, or your your aunt thought that your idea was great, and obviously they're biased. Um, they're not really going to ever give you like an honest opinion. And really, what I'm saying here is that you should always validate your ideas externally um, through uh, whatever means sort of necessary. So whether that's online market research, doing a poll on Facebook, or just going out and asking, like going out and networking and pitching your idea. People who are too close to you aren't going to give you like an impartial um, opinion on it and they won't be able to validate it against their their business needs so basically um, yeah go to them and be excited about it but don't expect to get um, a, a really business focused like answer um, or feedback about your idea because it's an, it, it might be I mean unless your mum your friend your brother or your aunt are business coaches or they run their own businesses they're not really going to know exactly what it is that you're sort of talking about um, the second mistake that I think I see people make is that they just think that because they've got this idea and put their product or service out, that they think everyone is going to want it. Everyone's going to buy your thing. And in this day and age, sorry, I'm just having a swig of coffee. In this day and age, that's just not the case. By the way, if any of this is resonating with you, just hit, hit the like button uh, or just leave a comment. I'm watching comments as we go. So... Um, uh, morning Louise, morning Wendy, morning Martin, uh, great to see you all, morning Mark, um, great to see you all on board. Um, so yeah, so we, we, we have this great idea and we think that just because we've got this idea, everyone is going to buy our thing. But the reality is like there's 10 gazillion other people doing exactly the same thing as you and it's a very crowded marketplace so it's actually really hard for people to find you so not only have you got like a good idea but you have to find ways of reaching your audience so i am be going through like the marketing manifest um, marketing mistakes manifesto i think on day three of this uh, i'll be rolling these out I'm, i've got no set structure i'll probably be rolling these five videos out um uh over there we go already like wendy's put my mum thought it was a bad idea there you go so had wendy listened to her mum she might not have actually um uh got into silversmithing and started doing the workshops and things like that and having this really successful like um you know craft business like making making silver jewelry is is um so it's a lost art in my opinion um and clearly there's a market for it so wendy good job you didn't listen to her and you didn't go and sit on a supermarket till uh, basically um So yeah, so we think that everybody wants to buy our thing. And the reality is, again, we haven't looked, we haven't asked the right questions. How do we know that everybody wants to buy our thing? What problem are we, are we really solving? Um, and the, the, the likely it is, you know, if you if you collect pin badges and there's an audience out there for people who collect pin badges as well, and you could be a leader, an expert in collecting pin badges, well, okay, there's, there's some validation there. But what is your product actually going to be that is going to be solving um, everyone's meaningful problems? And so the next problem then is you sit back and you scratch your head and go, well, why isn't anybody like buying my stuff? But you don't actually ask ask people when you pitch it. You don't ask them why they're not buying it. 
and a lot of the time it's down to fear because we're too afraid of hearing like negative feedback um and and you know the the probably the worst thing we can do is just keep on bashing our head against the wall thinking we've got this fantastic idea and not asking anybody for feedback and th- and beyond that they're not actually listening to them so if they come back and say look you know rob this thing you're doing just is a really bad idea um you know they're not actually listening to the reasons why they're doing it you know thankfully wendy didn't listen to her mum maybe had she gone to a business coach a business coach like me would have said yeah wendy that's a fantastic idea um but i bet probably had wendy come to me and i'd said no 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 wendy that's a really daft idea don't do that um but she carried on regardless and then would have still been scratching her head wondering why people weren't buying her workshops buying her jewelry and things like that uh, and then what it comes down to is we then start to have the fear sets in and we, we haven't validated our de- idea, we haven't validated ourselves, like why we're doing it, we haven't asked any of the right questions and so we just give up. And like one of the key things in business is that you just have to have this massive, like again, like I said, just if any of this is resonating, just hit like. And, and so we actually just start looking for jobs basically. We just go back to what we knew knew before that kind of worked and we start you know, exchanging time for money again. And all of these things, just, um, you know, if you're going to start a business, you have to kind of commit to it. Even if it's like, I'm going to commit to this for 12 months, commit to it. But try and just keep on asking questions and get to the the bottom of what people's problems really are, what pain points your products and services are going to solve. Um, Because the last thing we want you to do is go out and get another job. Uh, hey Nick, how's it going mate? Hope you're keeping well. Hey Liam, nice to see you mate. Everybody keep on hitting the like buttons. Let's get some more people watching this. Um, uh, the biggest mistake, so now basically I've had a hundred and no, 246 people now complete my um, assessment form. Okay, the first question on it is, do you have a business plan? You know, on a scale of one to 10, rate your business plan. Pretty much, pretty much everybody, well definitely everybody has scored less than five. Um, pretty much everybody scores zero or one or two. So yeah, so where do we get to? So they don't have a business plan. Pretty much nobody has a business plan and they were scoring themselves sort of anything from like a one to a five. And and that really shocks me because a business plan isn't basically just about getting um, like funding from banks and loans and things like that. Most of it isn't just for banks and loans and things like that. It's actually for... Um, uh, yourself basically and a business plan doesn't have to be complicated um, it can just be um, uh, b- basically a bit about you a bit about your products and services and things like that and then um, uh, now we've got a massive delay on the video this is slightly confusing I'm trying to catch up with where I'm up to but um, I'm totally lost anyway so I'll carry on so but basically it just needs to be a bit about you a bit about your products and your services um, who your target market is how you're going to attract that target market and and then sort of finally like um some just very basic finger in the air financial projections like if you want to earn a hundred thousand pounds a year and basically your um average client is worth a thousand pounds a year well you need a hundred clients okay how are you going to attract those hundred clients and then that constitutes your your marketing plan um or your business plan um so write this stuff down it's not it's not complicated but basically what it then means is there's a, a document then for you to kind of check back on uh, on a regular basis um like come back to it every month every 12 months or something like that and just just check in on where you are compared to where your goals were set in your business plan and you can lock that away in a drawer or do whatever you want to do with it um so then we move on to the um like and the thing as well is like have it there even if you don't refer to it because the simple like act of writing it down is one of the most important things um it locks in it's you making a contract with yourself that you're going to do some work with a with a specific goal in mind um and and also you have some financial projections to kind of then check back in and see whether you actually achieved your goal or not um so have it there like at least score yourself a five on a business plan um i think it's absolutely i was so shocked when i looked at the stats like for my my assessment form that like literally one person out of 245 of you had given yourself more than a five and that was only because they'd gone and had to put together something for for a funding circle loan um so linked to that is the fact that actually most of you don't have any idea what your goals are so you you've got this great idea you start putting it out to the marketplace but nobody really wants it and and you don't have a business plan which kind of tells you how you're going to achieve your goals so basically we need to have like um smart goals in place specific measurable actionable realistic time bound etc and um the simple process then is you've got again you've got something to um 
measure against um having a goal is a bit like punching the the postcode into a sat nav it gives you a destination and then you can actually start to plot a route in order to a journey in order to get to that goal um so uh but by the way hopefully if you can hear me again like there's quite a big delay on this but hit the like button uh hit the heart button i want people to hear this stuff these are common mistakes which every single business owner is making at the moment um uh, you know, across all of the hundreds of businesses that I've worked with over the last couple of years. Um, so yeah, so having a goal is like one of the most important things I think in business. Like if you have nothing else, have a goal, like seriously. Like I said just now, you know, if your goal is to make £100,000 a year and each client is worth £1,000 to you, you need 100 clients. So that's your that's your postcode, like punched into the sat nav. And now you can start working out what the route is to get to that goal. How do I attract 100 clients over the next 12 months? And then that starts to become your marketing plan. How do you attract those people? Um, what's uh, So Wendy's just left a comment. So let me just come back to that comment. So she said, uh, and in the meantime, in this interval, some comments, I've read much about the persistence in reaching success by, is by not giving up. 70% of businesses give up within, the, uh, within a few years. So I've heard that most businesses fail in the first, 50% of businesses fail in the first year. 50% of those businesses then fail within the first three years. 50% of those businesses are then gone within five years. And only 50% of those businesses are still in existence after 10 years. So if you wind that down, there's only about four or 5% of businesses still going after 10 years, which is just ridiculous. Um, and I, I liken it to kind of um, like digging for gold, basically. You just have to keep on going. So, yeah, totally valid, Wendy. You've got to hit the nail on the head there. Um, and in terms of like, so, going, so we've got goals now. Um, next biggest mistake, business mis mistake, is where I see business owners selling time for money. Now, I always say to people... You can always make more money, but you can never make more time. And if you're in the business of selling time for money, like you can double your prices. You're already making more money than you were, you were making previously. Now, everybody kind of get, does the international sign of distress at that point, waves their hands in the air and, um, you know, oh, I couldn't possibly charge that much. But the reason is like most people compare themselves to the competition. OK, and this is like the biggest mistake, especially when it comes to pricing, because 95 percent of your market might be charging the same amount. But how do we actually know whether they're right? And also, we don't need all of the clients. We only need a select handful of people who really see our true value. So look at how you're charging. Don't charge the same as everybody else because it's the wrong way to charge. Instead, start to look at the specific outcome which you deliver for your clients. Like when Wendy, you're on the call, so um, watching the video. So I'm going to stick with you. So when you moved from selling like jewelry, jewelry is like a commoditized thing basically, but you sell workshops. And all of a sudden, it's not about making jewelry. It's about the experience of the day doing the workshop, the connection with other people in that workshop, having firsthand like accountability, somebody watching you make this jewelry and give you pointers and tips on how you can improve. Hence, why it is so much more valuable than just making jewelry. Because so many people out there look at it as they, they see it as like a, a simple like, hey, I'll make some jewelry and then I can sell it. So remember the first mistakes? You think everyone wants to buy your thing? Well, they don't because there's so many other people like putting this stuff out there. Um, whereas the workshops, are mu there's so much more value in those workshops. Wendy, I reckon you could probably double the price in those workshops and still get the same number of people signing up to them. So I'd like really encourage you to, to, um, to look at how much you're charging for those. Now, this one's like a personal bugbear. The amount of time I get people saying stuff like, oh, I'm just not technical. I can't do Facebook ads. I can't do like MailChimp. I don't know how these things work. I'm not technical. Uh, I don't know how marketing works. I, like they just delegate responsibility. I don't know how the numbers work in a business. Like if I ask them for a profit and loss or something like that. So, um, you know, so basically, um, you, you're delegating responsibility. And like in business, you have to take responsibility for every part of a business. When you work for a company and you're in a specific department, other departments take care of accounting, other t departments take care of sales, other departments take care of marketing. But in your business, you are responsible for everything. Now, you don't have to know inside and out. You don't have to become a technical like genius. You don't have to become a marketing like expert. 
but you have to know at least some of the basics in order to be able to understand when you go and find a marketing expert or go and find an accountant or a bookkeeper or go and find a salesperson to help you that you can give them enough information about the mechanics of your business to be able to explain to them what your expectations are of them. Because if your goal is to get 100 clients in a year and you go to a marketing expert and say, look, my goal is to get 100 clients in a year. This is what I know works. So you give them a starting point. They've got so much more information to, to work from rather than just going, hey, I know nothing about marketing. Here's some money. Go and do some marketing. And then in 12 months time, you go, well, you, that didn't work. And they're like, well, what didn't work? You didn't tell me what you wanted me to do. So don't delegate responsibility. You need to know the numbers in your business, basically. And then the final one, and, and this is just uh, like, I see a lot of business owners just kind of banging their heads against the wall, wondering why stuff's not working, like getting really frustrated by it. And then they, they, they just don't ask for help. And you know, the first thing you should do, like go to a networking event, go and if you've got a friend who runs a business, go and sit down and have a coffee with them and tell them, like tell them what the problems are be open, share, because it's more than likely, A, they're having similar problems in their business. They may then have answers, like they might have said, well, I did this and it worked for me, so why don't you try that? You know, go and find a business coach for a mentor. Most business coaches and mentors offer like a, a diagnostic call or they'll have videos or books or things like, like e-learning courses, things that they can share with you. Um, like the cheapest way possible to get expert advice is to like, read books or listen to books on Audible or um, like go and download free PDFs and stuff like that and just start to educate yourself because again, dele delegating responsibility, banging your head against the wall saying this isn't working and not looking for an answer is like the biggest mistake that is not gonna help you get anywhere. So go and speak to people basically so the this is my business mistakes manifesto i'm sorry about some of the interruptions which we had i hoped you bear, um, bear with it i will also i've recorded this so i'll edit it up and put it into a youtube video as well and share that into the groups um hey deborah how's it going um hope you're doing well um like you know if you feel that these business mistakes resonated with you whilst you've been watching this please share it tag people into this and say hey guys this thing you said, I think you're making this mistake. And I've also managed to hopefully give you a few answers about how you can start to get yourself out of them. Now, I could do a, an entire coaching session on any one of these points. I've actually got four more videos, so I'll be covering the, the, the marketing mistakes manifesto, the sales mistakes manifesto, the pricing mistakes manifesto, and then another one. I've got five of these planned basically over the coming like week or two. So if you enjoyed this, please share it, please like it. Um, please do ask your questions below. If you're like, gosh, that resonated with me, but I don't know what to do about it. Comment below, ask a question. Um, so the last thing I wanted to say, because I've given you a bit of my time and a few tips and hints and things like that, is that basically I, I'm looking for new people to join the Fearless crew. So this is where I have, um, uh, this is like my entry point for coaching basically at the moment. Like, first of all, stop making these bloody mistakes. You don't have to struggle through business. You there is an easy way of doing it and having access to experts in my opinion is one of the best ways i mean i'm biased i'm a business coach but hey i'm allowed to be um, um i'm also bloody good at what i do i i can add significant value to businesses even just through this um you know it doesn't have to be expensive one-to-one -one coaching through this group with some accountability having somebody there to signpost you and be available for 15 minute turbo calls is absolutely vital so you get all of those things you get access to a facebook group you get access to me on turbo calls you get access to monthly webinar Q&A sessions, like a couple of hours worth of Q&A with me for answering your specific problems. And at £47 a month, which includes that, it is an absolute bargain in my opinion. So um, get yourselves over to robinweight.com forward slash fearless forward slash application. I don't take everybody. And by the way, by the time I finish these um, five videos, the, the business mistakes manifesto, um, uh, I am closing down applications for at least a month because I just want to focus on the people who are um, uh, who are in the crew for a month. I want to give them absolutely everything. So that's a really good reason to join up before I close that down. So probably within the next week, um, fearless applications will be closing. So if you haven't got a diagnostic call booked with me, if you haven't applied, you won't be getting into the club for at least a month. And I say at least a month. It will be at least a month. I may even leave it closed for longer because I've got a great crew of people in there. I would love to have more of you in there. Um, but if I've been giving a lot of value away to um, to people externally and I owe it to the crew to actually spend a lot more time with them. So there'd be a lot more accountability and things like that going on in the Fearless crew. It'd be great to have you in there. 
uh, like I said, head on over to robinwaitcom forward slash fearless forward slash application. And if, if you did have some stuff that resonated with this, like you don't have to do this stuff alone. Like stop making these mistakes. Like seriously, stop making bloody mistakes. Um, there are people out there who can help you. It doesn't ma- I don't even care if it's not me. It doesn't, doesn't bother me if it's not me. Absolutely fine. Hey, John, how's it going, mate? Um, don't forget to like and share this um, video. Hugely appreciate it. The uh, video's just coming to an end, by the way, so sorry if you joined us a little bit late. Um, but, like, jump into the crew. Um, I've got a great sales letter which I can send you, which, like, has got some great snapshot case studies which Deborah helped me um, write up and some full-blown case studies as well as to exactly how much value I deliver to my clients. I had 45 clients in 2017, 30 of them doubled their turnover within six months, and the rest of them are kind of well on their way to improving and growing their businesses. Um, or at least they have a lot more confidence in within their businesses and they're not making these mistakes. That's the key thing. Um, so if you want to join them, like £47 a month is an absolute bargain in my opinion. So I'm going to sign off now. Um, thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the shares and the comments. Um, Wendy, Deborah, John, Mark, um, who else? Nick came on the call. Um, thanks for watching guys. Um, Louise. Um, great to see you all and and Nick as well uh, awesome thanks for sharing Nick um, I shall look forward to catching up with all of you in due course like I said there's going to be four more of these videos so keep an eye out for them um, if you like the branding please leave some comments as well and I'll catch up with you all soon thanks very much <laughs>